Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, I'm going to do finally the next part of my high end AMD build. In this one, I'm going to do mostly performance testing. It will be split between some standard performance testing utilities. Uh, and I'm going to also try to actually use it to do a render. I'm going to compare the results that I get from that to my existing primary editing rig. I think there'll be a noticeable difference, but as you'll see, this is not going to be the one that I'm going to have for much longer. Well, but we'll be doing that again in terms of performance comparisons in the near future. But in addition to that, I'm going to add some new hardware to this, or at least upgraded hardware, and I'm going to make a slight case mod. And let me explain those. So if I come back to the PC here, first off, the RGB looks pretty good. Right now I got it on a nice blue in a heartbeat mode. Looking fine. Well, there's one thing that sticks out here that does not match, and that's the memory. This Oleo memory, which I have four sticks of eight gigabyte, they have these reddish heat sinks to them. They're not RGB, and they don't match very well. Also, they're on the slower side. The, that memory has a, uh, a clocking CL of just 18, so I want to speed it up a little bit as well. I purchased, finally, after thinking about it for a long time, this Trident Z Neo memory. I got 32 gigs, that's two sticks of 16 gigs each, and that's going to replace it. And this one here is a CL16, so it'll be a little bit faster. I'm going to try doing some performance testing. At least that would involve memory both before and after I change that memory. And I'll put the results later in this video. But in addition to that, it's kind of hard to see, but the 3080, this EVGA 3080 that I have, it is very long. It is very heavy. It's got a nice solid back plate to it. And I did put a special support, a low cost support that's connected to two of the motherboard screws all the way in the back here. If you look carefully, you would see them. Well, I don't think that that is as strong. It, it still wiggles quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is this GPU did come with a bracket from the manufacturer, this stainless steel bracket here on the side. It's connected to the actual backplate. It is meant for working with cases that already have an attachment that can connect up to that. This case here, the Corsair 400D, does not have that capability. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take these brackets that I got, which are really meant for holding a water cooler pump underneath the reservoir, but they also are very flexible in terms of you can put the screw almost anywhere on each end of this L bracket. I am going to mount this in here against the back that little ledge that we have that's blocking the cables that I had to move over to get the GPU to fit in the first place. I'm going to drill probably a couple of holes in here. I'm going to remove it first because it is removable as you may recall from my earlier video. Drill those holes in it and then this will attach with the short end to the GPU, those two screw holes that are along the side here. And the long end, I may have to bend it a little bit but it's going to sit behind this little cover, that white cover. So I want to make it a little less obvious. We'll see how that goes. If I can't bend it easily, I'm going to just put it in front. I may spray paint it white just so that it matches uh, the case. That may actually be the best way to go, but let's see how it goes as I, as I get that in there. So that's the changes that I plan on making to this computer in addition to the performance testing that I'm doing in this video. And I guess I should mention these brackets that I bought, and they come with screws as well, actually were bought from EK. They're big in terms of providing the custom water cooling equipment. This was meant to hold a pump. That's why they gave you two of them. So you can put them on the side of the pump for underneath the reservoir and then attach it to the base of the case or anywhere you'd like because these are flexible. And wherever you decide to drill the holes, because this is obviously meant for having holes drilled, you could do it. But I looked at this very carefully, got the dimensions, and I believe it'll work very well. But we'll see. You know, I still could run into a problem with it. But the idea here is this will be uh, hopefully more out of the way and a more secure support for that uh, video card. And it obviously needs it. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do in this video. And uh, hopefully you get something out of it. 
And if you do, uh, I'd like to ask, at least ask if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. Well, let's get started. Okay, now I'm going to change the memory here. Got it opened up. Got to work around these hoses a little bit. So I got to get down in here and push open the uh, tabs on the side of the memory. Of course, the water cooler is a little bit in the way here. There we go. Looks like they're all open now. Okay, got one out. Two out. Three out. And now this one should be a little bit easier to get out there we go four out let me put in these trident z's i got a two to two outer ones so i'll put the back one in first there we go push that one in two clicks looks like i heard it the next one down again we do the two outer ones the lighter gray in this case for this motherboard there we go, it's in. Let me get two clicks. Two clicks. Okay, let me bring it up and test it out. Okay, it came up, but it looks like the colors of the RGB on the memory are not yet synchronized with that of the motherboard. Let me go into the software and see if I can straighten that out. Okay, all I had to do was go into Armory Gate and make sure that the memory was added to the RGB and it automatically took over. So now, I got everything in sync. No more sour red sitting in the middle of this thing here. Okay, now let me move on to getting the support for the GPU. Okay, what I've done is remove the video card so I can get to the brace that I had put in here before. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove that one. It's held down by two standoffs into the motherboard. As you can see, this one just had a little shelf not very good. I actually had to bend it to actually get it to work properly because they don't give you the ability to put the screws in any position. There's only certain holes that they've drilled in it. So I take the standoffs out. Now what I'm going to do is take the video card and secure, and I need to put this bracket temporarily on here. Now the trick to this, it goes into the slot this way. So I got to get it into the right position. And then this will actually screw here and then connect up to the other one. Now this is going to be flexible. That's why I like the slotted angle bracket that I bought here. And what I have to do is use two motherboard screws. I put an extra washer on them. I'm going to show you the kit that I got that from down in the comments below. It's a kit of screws that I found very helpful. All black. So without dropping the card. See how it's, uh, it's now can be moved. Now I'm going to put the card back in and we're going to see where I can mark it to drill the holes in the case. And it's back in. I'm going to secure it just so it doesn't fall out. And now I should be able to move this up and down to the right position. Let me go ahead and mark this. I got it nice and flat. I'm going to take a pencil. Always have pencils. You don't want to make a permanent mark on that and I'm just going to draw a little pencil I can always erase it right and then I can pull the card back out again and that's where I'm gonna drill a couple of holes right in there I'm gonna take that metal piece out of here first I don't want shavings going inside of my case so let me just jump ahead and remove the card okay with the removal of that single screw the one back here this whole thing is out. I smudged the pencil a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to clean it up afterwards anyway. So I do see enough there to drill the two holes that I want. Good enough. Let me go drill those holes. Okay, I've got two holes drilled in it now, right in that spot, which I think are the right places. And I cleaned it up with some alcohol. Alcohol does a pretty good job with that type of stuff. So now I just need to put it back in and we'll try to remount it and see what happens. Okay, now I have it lying flat again. It turns out I won't be able to have this installed on the card after bending it. Just the angle that it's at, it won't go in there. So what I had to do is I removed the front panel and the filter. And I'll be able to hopefully squeeze a screwdriver between these. If not, I'll remove a fan in order to tighten the screws from the bracket, which will go up underneath like this, into the video card. That's the only way I can do it. So I'll first attach this 
on the other side of this panel, right? Let me jump ahead. Okay, so now I have it installed here. I had to actually loosen this bracket up again in order to get to the second nut. I used the nuts and screws that came with these brackets. It came with four of each, so two of them worked out just perfect. So now I gotta put the video card back in, hopefully. No problems with that. And then I'll have to attach it. Push that a little bit out. Down in place like this. Okay, it's down and in. And now I gotta get these screws into the side here. First, let me at least start to secure it up front so it doesn't fall out on me. You know, I'll go ahead and remove the fan. That's the safest thing to do. I don't want to break those blades. So let me do that first. Okay, I got the four screws out. Let me get this fan out of the way here so I can reach through and connect this bracket up. Okay, that worked well. Now this guy's secured to the bracket. Let me get the fan back on. Then I'll put the power connectors back on and we'll be ready to go. Okay, time to bring it back on and make sure I didn't break anything. I put the power cable on, but I didn't turn it on yet. Let me turn it on. Oh, I see the motherboard light in the background there. That's good. I guess I'll power it on. Wow, I got all the lights. I was able to connect all the... I had to disconnect a lot of this RGB. It just wasn't going to, uh, to work and let me move that panel around. But there are the two screws that are holding the bracket now with a L bracket. Good, the memory picked up now, caught up with the motherboard, and we got a screen. Let me go to the screen here and you'll see what I mean. So there's the login screen for that PC. Let me log in. And we're up. Well, let me finish the performance testing that I was doing before. Again, I'm going to try to compare it to two other PCs. This main one here that I use and I'll compare it to the original backup editing rig that I have. Now for the benchmark testing, some of which was done actually before the modifications and upgrades, but this is the final results of everything. Please note that I did most of the benchmark test on the new high-end rig, both before and after the memory upgrade. I was amazed to see how much difference it made with the memory upgrade. Basically most tests, except for probably the disk speed, actually went up by about 10%. However, the performance testing results I show at the end of this video are just the results that were taken after I've upgraded the memory. Okay, in this test, I'm running 3D Mark 11. This is the same when I'm comparing all of the different computers against. So let's take a quick look at what it looks like here. I'll probably zoom ahead through it, if not cut it short. Okay, that completes it. We got a 19,277. Well, this is the Cinebench test, very commonly used, and I'm going to run it here on my main computer. Okay, uh, 3,017 points. That's actually better than I did last time, but this time I've restricted what's running on the computer to the minimum. Okay, now we're running the Heaven benchmark. It's a very intensive graphics one that does a pretty good job. Very common. Well, it's all done. Got a score of 2227. Doesn't compare to the faster cord machines, the AMD ones at this point, but this PC will be getting upgraded soon. Well, this is Crystal Disk Mark. It checks the performance of the storage drives on the computer. I'm going to start with drive C, which is my NVMe. Well, that's done. I, very impressive when you consider that's just a SATA SSD. So it's like double the speed, both reading and writing. But that's what RAID 0 does for you. Of course, there's extra risk involved with that as well, because if one goes bad, you lose the whole thing. But the performance is worth it. I've always wondered if I tried like four drives, would I get four times the performance? One day I'll have to try that. Anyway, let's move on to the next test. Okay, what I'm doing here is uh, showing how I rendered a particular performance-oriented video. It has a lot of different transitions in it. It has uh, speed-ups, significant speed-ups, sort of the things that I normally do to representative of it, but it's or one hour and 46 minutes long.
Well, that concludes this video where I built a new high-end video and gaming rig as my backup. It will become my primary backup once I roll it into that roll. Most of the parts are going to stay with what I have in there except for the NVMe. Based upon those tests, that particular NVMe is actually much faster and also twice the size as one terabyte. So I'm going to do a switcheroo and hopefully I don't have to change too much and the software will you know, pretty much work. Windows 10 is pretty good about that sometimes, but not always. Now going forward, I may do another video related to this one in terms of a future upgrade, but right now I don't have anything planned for that, so we can consider this part five being the final version of it. Now, my existing primary, and you'll see in the future video, probably you know a month or so down the road, I still have a couple of parts I have to get for that. Then I'll go ahead and completely upgrade this one. Now most of it is going to be completely new. Some of it will be carried over from this system, but very little, as you'll see. I mean, I think the solid state drives, including the NVMe, will definitely be carried over. And, you know, some of the other peripherals, too, that are in here. But I'm going to have to buy even a new case, because that case does not adequately support the all-in-one water cooling that I want to put on the new system. I think that's good for now, and when I create my testing and sort of playing around with system, I'll be able to do more videos in trying different things with that because that'll be a performance type system with a 3700X and I'll be able to try a bit more than I could do with you know one of the old legacy systems that I was trying to do in the previous versions of those videos. So hopefully you got something out of this video and if you did please consider subscribing to my channel. That would be very helpful and I can continue doing these types of videos. Well until the next time take care, be healthy, and be safe.